Well, good evening, everybody. How y'all doing? I'm smoking Voodoo Queen in this here cannonball that was given to me by LaDon Mott just a few days before he passed away. I wanted to come on here and tell everybody thank you ever so much. Thank you ever so much for praying for my dear wife. We don't know what her situation is at the moment. We know that at the last time that we heard, she was at stage 3B of kidney failure. She's already told me she's not going to do dialysis. I told her the only reason that she wasn't was so she'd get there first and dance on the streets of gold and say, ha, 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 I beat you. I got here before you. Never in my life would I have thought that she would have gone first. But four or five people have asked me how I met my wife. So I guess I'll tell you that story. I just come to Nashville and and uh, went to a little old church and. And uh, I started playing the piano for that church, started preaching at times in that church. And a couple in that church called Carla and told her, said, you need to come back over here, said, uh, you need to hear this piano player. And so it took several weeks of them prodding and prodding and prodding her to, to come over and to hear me play. And the very night that she came to hear me play, I, was, I played that night, but also preached that night. Well, then the next Sunday, that, fin that family invited me over to uh, have dinner with them after church on Sunday morning. And, of course, you can't tell by looking at me, but that's one of my favorite pastimes is eating. And so I went over there. Well, I wasn't over 10 minutes till the door opened and Carla come walking in. Now, I didn't know she was going to be there, and she didn't know I was going to be there. And I was very uncomfortable with it, and she was really uncomfortable with it. We had our meal, and when we got through with our meal, she said, Well, I'm not going to change what I normally do. I'm going to go home, read my newspaper, and take a nap. I'll see y'all. And out the door she went. Well, she come back to church on Sunday night, that Sunday night to hear me again. So after the service, I asked the people, the couple who had invited her over and, and tried to pull a pull something on both of us by inviting us both over for dinner without the other knowing it. I asked them for her telephone number. So I called her up on the phone and we talked about two hours. 
And I began calling her just about every day. I knew what time she got home from work. And I'd give her enough time to get something to eat. And I'd give her a call and we'd sit there and talk for hours. And so, finally one evening, I told her, I said, I'd, I'd like to talk to you in person to tell you some things that I don't feel comfortable about talking on the phone. And I said, you know, there's the Shoney's, it's just not very far from, from where uh, Martha and, and them, that was the late one, that was the lady that it, had got us to talking to each other. I said, there's a Shoney's down there. I said, would you, uh, would you be willing to meet me there and we'll just, and we'll talk. And so she did. And, And I sat there and pretty much told her my life story. And so when I got through telling her my life story, she, she Graciously got up and left, but she was crying when she left. And I thought, well, that's the end of that. I won't hear from her again. Well, on Monday night, she called me. That's the first time she had called me. And she asked me if I'd like to come over to her house. For dinner. Well, that was a given. I go about anywhere for a good dinner. <laughs> so I went over there. We began seeing each other. Now, Martha and her family had no idea that we were, I knew where she lived. They didn't have no idea that we were we were really getting interested in each other. And finally, one day, we just decided to get married. So we went down to Georgia and we got married. On the way back, she said, I am a dead woman. And I said, what do you mean you're a dead woman? When my mother finds out that we got married, she will be ever so mad that she wasn't a part of my wedding. I said, well, let's get married in Tennessee. Well, we're already married. I said, oh, you can get married in every state that there is. I said, we can get married here. She said, we can. I said, yeah. I said, I ought to know. Well, yeah, you should. I said, so. She said, well, I guess it's time to go up to Indiana and, and introduce you to the family. So we went to Indiana and met her mother and, and uh, stayed there that night. And then the next morning we left and come back. And so we got married on October the 3rd. And then we got married on November the 3rd. So this year we've been married 30 years as of October the 3rd. In November we'll be married 30 years as of November the 3rd. So I guess we've been married 60 years. <laughs> But the funny thing about it was when we got married in, in October, we went by and told Martha and them that we got married. They like to have fell out. They said, what do you mean you got married? 
We didn't even know he knew where you lived. And so they made a prediction right then that we wouldn't last six months. Well, they're off just about a few years. We've now been married 30 years. We've had a wonderful life. Oh, we've had ups and downs like everybody's had ups and downs. Never realized that one day that I would be disabled and never, never be able to walk again. But we always, always trusted in God. Someone asked me the other day, he said, well, what are you going to do with your wife having a death sentence over her and, and everything? What are you going to do? I said, we're going to just trust God. Now, am I praying for healing? I sure am. I sure am praying for healing. I don't want to lose her. She's, a, she's not only my wife, she's my best friend. She's my caregiver. She's the lover of my life. And I want us to live to be 90 years old together. But God might have something else in mind. And if he does, I'm, I'm willing to, to live with that. I don't know what I'll do after she leaves. My situation is, is not good after she leaves. But that's neither here nor there. What's most important is that I help her to enjoy life as long as she can. And that probably won't be another year. But we'll keep hoping, we'll keep praying, and we'll keep believing God and trusting in God. And I just wanted to thank every one of you ever so much for praying for my wife, for, for, for all of the comments that you've made, how you're praying for her, you're praying for me. I thank you so much. We've got other people in the YTPC that needs prayer. We've got other people in the YTPC that's, that has problems, has situations in their life that's hard to deal with, and we need to be praying for them. One I can think of is Cliff Higgins. Cliff Higgins is one of the finest young men I have ever met. And I'm proud to know him. And I think that all of us ought to take time every day and take him to the Lord in prayer. Well, I guess that's about all I have for today. We were down in the 30s last night. My, my wife was praying for a frost. She's waiting for the frost to hit the grass so it'll stop growing. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know when it'll come, but, it, but we'll get one here before long. And uh, I have enjoyed so many of you's, your, your videos that you've put out. And uh, I just want you to know I appreciate every one of you. So until next time, you take care of yourself. May God richly bless you. May he richly watch over you, care for you. May he richly bless supply all of your every need and take of every care care of every circumstance and every situation in your life
So every one of you, light up a pipe and have a sweet smoke. Enjoy your pipe. Bye-bye.